So tomorrow for the next quiz up, we're going to go read from 3 to 5, 1, 3 to 1, 5. Uh, it's highly mathy of math stuff you've done before. Uh, starting in Algebra 1 is where you first encountered this mathy stuff. If you had Algebra 2, you did it again. Uh, if you had chem, you did it again. If you're having physics, you're getting it again. Uh, but there's going to be six points from the reading of mathy stuff. And then today, the grand total is 10. Okay, but I think the points in the newest reading will be a little bit more obvious than the first reading. We'll find out tomorrow, I suppose. Um, so instead of today, number one, where you filled in physics, tomorrow is what is physics? So you would say tomorrow it's the science that examines the relationships of matter and energy. Two stays the same. So we want to use what we had as best possible answer. That was the total understanding of how the universe operates. Three stays the same, so we're going there with equations. And then instead of that open-ended question, I will give you an equation to solve. And what we're about to do on the board is just solve all these different equations for all these different letters and different combinations. So I'll pick something like this and just tell you, like, I want you to get R11, or I want you to get H11, or I want you to get L11, or whatever the case may be. I'll, I'll create a little problem, and you'll just have to get something alone using your algebra skill. The homework based on this is going to be on page 6. It'll go from 1 to 7. So on page 6, from 1 to 7, that is our homework. And we'll just go to work on this. So if I wanted to solve this problem and get the B alone, can anybody tell me what would you have once the B were the variable that's alone? How would you do that? Can we call? AC equals B? Uh, not quite. A over C? It'd be A over C. These two at present are doing what? Multiplying. And you always have to do the opposite. So if they're multiplying, you're going to have to divide. When you divide, you'd end up with the C going downstairs. So we'd have the A get divided by the C. What if I instead requested that the C should be allowed? See? You see it? That wasn't me, but okay. I didn't say it. Okay, so what answer will be? A over B. A over B. It's harder to track voices with the uh, <laughs> masks. It's like, it's coming from a general area and then you're not sure. Anybody a question about that one where there was multiplying in the problem, so we were looking to divide on those. Uh, let me go over here, slightly out of order. We'll stick to the easier ones first. So if I want to get the Q alignment, how would I go about on this one, trying to get the Q alignment? P minus R. It would be P minus R. Since the problem's adding, you have to do subtracting. So in the olden days, when you first started to do algebra, you wrote more work. And maybe this makes some of you more comfortable. If you see an add R, you look to subtract R. We look to subtract R. We draw ourselves our line. Cross out the R's. If that still helps you, because you used to do it that way, that's all still well and good. P minus R is not a problem you can really do. You just write P minus R. What if I wanted the R alone instead? It would be P minus Q. Anybody mad at the problem was adding, so we did some subtracting with those letters. Let's go on this one after the E. DF. It would be D times F, because on the board, this stuff is dividing, so you multiply. have to multiply. If we want to leave the E alone, we'd have to multiply the F. So it would be the D times the F. 
Let's save getting the F alone for a minute, because if you're solving for something on the bottom, life got a little bit harder. So I'm going to leave that for a moment. Let's go on this one. Let's get the H alone. Since that's on the top, that's a little bit of an easier game to play. Somebody? G I squared. G I squared is correct. Since this is dividing, she just had to multiply. So the G multiplies the I squared. If I want the I alone, that's going to be a little more complicated because it's on the bottom and there's also a square. So we'll do this one before we do that one, but I'm going to just let that hang for a minute. Question about the ones I did, I could do more like it by, I'm just throwing up random letters. None of these equations mean anything. Like your book actually used F equals MA. That's an actual thing, like force, mass, acceleration. That's semi-famous. I think that's a book Mr. Keller made you read, didn't he? Some of you guys, didn't you have to read a book for him? No? Yeah, maybe. Summer reading. Some summer reading, they had to read a book. That was what it was titled, I'm pretty sure. Um, anything to redo? So on this one, let me try to get the V alone. That's the easiest one of that cluster to get alone. If I got the V alone. S times T. Disagree. S minus TU. I agree. The TU is like a cluster right now together that's trying to add. So if we want that out of there, we can just keep that together and just get it out of there. The S would subtract that whole cluster, that whole TU thing. If I try to get the T alone, that might take us a couple steps. So let me you know, clean a little area right here. If my goal is to get the T alone, you would subtract the V first. What would happen at first with the U? It would stay. The T and the U would stay as a little cluster, and we would try to attack just the V part. If you have multiplying and adding both in the same problem, do the adding and subtracting part of it first. So we would want to subtract the V. So I have S minus V is the TU. To complete the process? Divide what? Divide by u. Divide by u. How would that look? S minus v. S minus v all on the top and a u on the bottom. Question about that one? Take 10 seconds. Which one did we just get alone? T? Yes. Get the u alone. Take 10 seconds, get the U alone, and see if you understood what just happened, because it's pretty much the same deal. S minus T, S minus V over T. It would be an S minus V, all on the top of a T. That is correct. I can give you the details on that if you want. I need some detail. Clearing, clearing, clearing. Mission mm. accomplished. Mission accomplished. Let's go after the thing on the bottom. Anybody have a theory on variable on the bottom? Some options at your disposal. I'm going to disagree with that probably as an initial move because we still have the same issue of the variable on the bottom is problematic. It's not wrong. You could do that, but I don't know if it's getting us closer to our goal. Multiply by F Okay, that's a pretty good move. Okay, so there's two main first moves you could make on this. I'll take you down two different roads. You just need to understand one of the roads. One road you could take is, since this is dividing by F, and we don't like the variable on the bottom, multiply by F. That hasn't really gotten us any more alone. 
it just put the D with the F. It's still equally crowded with the F as it was. But we did improve the overall problem because the F is no longer on the bottom, and that's going to be better for us. Then how would you carry that through to completion? Divide by D. Divide by D. So F, in the end, when alone, is E over D. Question about that road. Here's your other road. I could make this side look more like this side if I wrote the D over a 1. If my preference is for the F to be on the top, I can. I don't have to. I'm going to take a different path. Quick way to get the F on the top. This is a hint. Flip it. Some of you have seen that gesture a lot in our lifetime together. Okay, so you could flip it, because in the world of equations, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. To the other. So if we're going to flip this side, you just have to flip, flip that side. So you can take the original problem and turn it into this. And then that's like one that we did earlier. Okay. We have the F on the top now, which is better to get the E moved out of there. Multiply. We get the same result. You don't have to understand both of those. They're both legal. It all works. Here's even a third road you can take is anytime you have two fractiony things, you can do a thing called cross multiplying. So we could make this be d times f. You could take that and have 1 times e. If you want the f alone, you're still going to end up with that same path. Okay? But variable on the bottom, there's a lot of tools in your toolbox. You just have to pick one that you can work. Question there. So if we have the same issue on this, I think the simplest thing we had was probably Josh's idea. Okay? Josh's idea was take the variable on the bottom that we didn't like and just send it to the top of the other side. So I'll go that road on this. So I don't want this on the bottom. I'm just going to send it out of there. So I have gi squared is the h. If I want to get the, we're trying to work on the i this time. How could I get the i more aligned? Divide the g. Divide the g. So I have i squared would be who? H over g. H over g. And then if I want the i completely, completely, completely alone and not to have the square anymore, we root it. The opposite, everything in math has an opposite. The opposite of squaring is square root. If square rooting just freak you out, there are not a lot of equations that will involve square rooting this year. So that's like about a one in a hundred shot that that would happen to us anytime soon again, but that could happen again. Question there. Then here's a crazy giant thing to just sort of illustrate the idea of cross multiplying. The concept of cross multiplying is essentially any letter on the top, if you want to send it, anything from the top would have to travel to go to the bottom of the other side. Or anything on the bottom you want to travel, send to the top of the other, top side. Of the other side. So if I want to send the J, who would J join? I know. Who would K join? M. 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 Who would L join? M. M. Who would M join? M. Who would N or O join? M. M. So if we want to send them, that's where they're going. I don't necessarily want to solve all six combinations of this. So somebody, uh, right, uh, pick a letter on the top. J. J. So if I want to get the J alone, I'd want the K to go to the bottom. To the bottom. I'd want the L to go to the, top. to the top. So my answer is LM over KNO. Does that bother anybody? I could do another one myself.
And they win. Pick any letter on the bottom. L. L. If we want to get the L alone, here's where I think I would travel the my suggestion thing of let's just flip them all. Okay, getting that L alone from the bottom is kind of a pain. So just take both sides and flip them both. So if we want to get the L alone, we just have to move J, K to N, O. So we'd have J, K, N, O on top of N. If you didn't like that, here's another choice we could use. Okay, so we could do the Josh idea of just move the L up, which makes the M have to move down. down. If the L were here, the M is in its way, they'd essentially just swap spots. And the NO has to go up. And it's the same answer. There's nothing in the homework like that, but that's just there to try to help illustrate cross multiplication concepts of sort of zigzagging those things. Question about any of that crazy solving algebra stuff. So again, quiz, we're reading three through five, six new points based on highly mathy things of things you've done in math and science classes before. Homework, you're solving a bunch of equations on page six, one to seven. That's all we got. Last call, questions? All right.